Hey guys, today I'm going to show you something a little different here. I know I've never done a video quite like this one. Um, but I'm going to show you guys a DIY design for, for anybody that wants to do this kind of stuff. Um, it's a little module I built. Fairly, you know, it's been a couple of years ago. I didn't want to release anything until I knew it was going to work. Uh, because, you know, like I, I put a lot of testing in the stuff that I do. I don't just throw schematics in and go, oh, this works. You know, I like to make sure things do work and uh, make sure everything does hold up. So this has been out for quite a while now, this design. And what it does is, for anybody that has an EP2 or EP3 expression pedal, you probably already know it doesn't work with vintage Moog synthesizers or any other synthesizer with CV input. Um, and that is because the new Moogs have an internal 5-volt supply at the foot pedal jack. And so what it does, these use a TRS jack. So you got a sleeve, a ring, and a tilt. The sleeve's ground, the, the ring is actually where the plus 5 volts comes in from the synthesizer. And then it goes through the variable resistors and it comes out. Here is a CV control signal, how it works. Um, the old Moogs, like the memory Moog for example, you've got a foot pedal input, but it was actually designed for the old 1120 pedal. And that one you actually had to put a battery in, and uh, that was how it actually made CV was off a 9 volt battery. And so this is a good way to eliminate needing batteries. <laughs> and it also allows you to use this pedal with all kind of synthesizers. You can use this pedal with anything that has a plus or negative 5 volt CV input. And so it's really handy. Um, so anyways, this is a module form. Now, it don't have to look exactly like this, but I'm going to explain it to you so you can kind of get an idea of what this thing does. I'll explain how it works in a uh, general fashion here. I've drawn some schematics of it. My schematic drawings aren't super great, but, you know, hopefully it'll make some sense to you guys. Um, but first of all, I'll start just by explaining kind of how this thing works and give you a reference here. So what we, what we have here is we actually have a dual power supply. Is really what it is, and there's a reason why I do dual power supplies, because even with a Moog synthesizer that has like a modern Moog synthesizer, you only have a plus five volts, so you can't do negative voltage sweeps. You can't do negative polarity sweeps with what you're controlling. You can only do positive. So this little box allows you to do positive and negative, and uh, so it actually gives you a lot more expression. And also what it does too is you got a, a mount control on the side of the pedal. But that's kind of a nuisance, especially when you're trying to play and you, you don't have to reach down every time to readjust this thing to set your you know, your, your tuning or whatever you're trying to use this pedal for. So what I've also done is I've installed this schematic with a, a uh, trimming pot. So you can literally uh, set your amount output using this variable resistor here instead of having to use this one. So what I do, I just leave this one full on and I just use this one to control the amount at my hand. So I have to bend down and adjust it. Um, but okay, we'll get into the schematics here a little bit. I'll give you just a, uh, I'll give you a good breakdown of this thing so you can get an idea of what's going on. So first of all, we'll start with the power supply or the transformer. So uh, don't be mistaken, this is a AC output transformer. So it's not a, a it's not a wall work like a power supply. It's actually producing a, a 9 volt AC output. 120 volts in, 9 volt AC out, 400 milliamps. Um, and to be honest with you, I just go to thrift stores and I find these things. I just buy them, buy them you know, from thrift stores and everything else because you can get them really cheap. Usually you can get them, for like, I think I paid like 50 cents for this one, you know, and uh, so I just wired it in. So that's a good way to save some money on your, on your modifications. Um, but once again, you know, this is, uh, I'm just going to break this thing down. So basically the schematic of what this would look like if you used to draw it out, it would look like this right here. So you got your 120 volts coming in on a, on a single primary, and you got a single secondary, meaning there's only one set of windings per section. So on the, on the single secondary, this is actually putting out roughly 9, I said 10 volts here, but... Uh, 10 volts to 15 volts is really where you want to stay in the window of. Anything more than 15 volts gets into a, a higher voltage level um, later on in the circuit, which I'll explain, because this all makes sense. Um, so anyways, this is represented here. This represents the transformer voltage AC input here. So then what you got is you got these two uh, 
two diodes, which in my, my design I'm using a 1N4004. That's like a one out diode. It's just a, it's just a good all around general rectification diode. And uh, you can really use, you know, whatever you want. Just, you know, I just I just really like the 1N4004s because I've always got them in stock. Um, so what this does is for those that don't know, a diode works like a, a check valve. It only let voltage flow one way and it won't flow backwards if the polarity changes, for example. And so what this does is this allows you to have a negative and a positive. And so the cathode is the little line here which represents the negative side and the anode is the positive. So you can see this has got the cathode facing this way. So what that does is this is a sine wave input. So whenever this has an input of a slope of a positive, that's your positive voltage, it'll actually flow to this diode and when it cycles negative it'll flow to this diode but at any time if this is if this is negative up here coming in it will be blocked by this diode so it's only going to let the positive slope come through the diode and the negative slope come through this diode it's kind of how that works and what that gets you is that gets you some something called pulsating DC so that's pulsating DC uh, at this point and then what you have is you have a uh, capacitor which actually cleans up that pulsating DC to make it a flat, clean, non-regulated DC voltage. That's how that works. So what I've done in my circuit is I've used a uh, 1000 microfarad at a 35 volt cap. So 35 volts gives you plenty of, of headroom for that cap. You don't want to be right at the voltage that you have input. Um, and this also gets into what I was talking about with these voltages, why it's critical to make sure you don't go too high in voltage. Because um, you can see this is a 10 volt supply that's running at 60 hertz. So every, every cycle, this gets a pulse of, of, a, uh, of a positive signal. And on that positive signal, it actually charges this cap up to 14.15 volts. So you got 14.15 volts setting here off that 10 volt supply. And the reason this is critical is because you've got a regulator down here. And the regulators I use, if I'm not mistaken, they're rated for 30 volts max input. So at anything higher, like when I run at like 15 volts, a little over 15, I'm actually getting about 25, 26 volts uh, unregulated DC voltage. So it's getting kind of close to the 30 volt limit. And basically when you get up into the higher voltages, these regulators get a little hot because they're having to basically work harder to regulate that voltage down to something that you're actually needing. So I really like the 10 to 12 volt range. That's really what, what I like. Um, and that's what I recommend. Um, but anyways, you've got, you've got your, uh, your, unre your unregulated DC voltage here. So then it comes over here. Now this is a tracing jump. For those that don't know schematics, I'm jumping over this tracing here. This is actually a ground reference. Um, right here you can see the ground tie-in. And uh, so what that does, that's actually grounding the negative side of this cap. So it's a positive here. And it runs down to this uh, regulator on pin 3. And then this regulator is actually what takes it and it makes it a, a clean 5 volt DC signal regulated. And you got a filter cap here for the output of this regulator just to keep from oscillating or, or having any kind of noise on it. And then, uh, so that's really how it works. That's really just one section of a, of a power supply. It's just looking at the positive half. The negative half is identical, but everything's reversed polarity wise. As far as capacitors, they're going to be reverse polarity because it's an electrolytic cap and they will explode if you get these backwards in polarity. So basically you just got to think of it this way. This one's always got positive, this one's always getting negative. So everything's got to be kind of backwards. And then the same thing, the regulator, it's got a little different pin out. So your pin out for this one is, uh, pin one is ground. Uh, pin two is actually the input. Pin three is the output. That's your negative regulator. Your positive regulator is, pin two is ground. Pin three is input. And then pin uh, one would be output. That's how that works. So that's really just the power supply section. And uh, what I'm using for the regulators, just so you guys can see, these are the regulators I use. I like these regulators because they're really low current. They don't supply a lot of current. It's like 100 milliamps. So you don't have to worry. It's, it's low enough that it ain't going to hurt anything if something was to happen. 
Um, but I'm using the LM, I'll show you the part number here, the LM79L05ACZ, which is the negative, and then the 78L05ACZ is the positive. So basically it's the 78 or 79. And that's your two regulators you're using. And then what happens is now we get into the fun part of actually what this module does. So that's the power supply. We've got a toggle switch here which selects whether it's looking at negative or positive. And that sends it out to the TRS jack for your foot pedal. So this is where the EP3 or EP2 would be plugged in. That plus to negative 5 volts depending on what this toggle switch is set at comes in on this pin and it goes through the uh, the internal resistors of this of this uh, pedal and it comes out on this on this line and goes through this variable resistor which is a 10k linear reference to ground and then it comes out and goes into the CV output uh, jack of your of your pedal that's it that's really how it works and um, what I use for the toggle it's actually an on-on position so it's got two two positions and so basically positive and negative voltage and then the output that's how this works but uh, that's it guys that's how it works um, I'll show you kind of what a build looks like this is one I've completed here and I did do an optional LED you can put an LED in there if you want to what I did for this LED is I actually run off the unregulated side so I've actually got it tied in right here to the positive unregulated voltage through a 2.2k resistor and then the LED and I got reference to ground so this is kinda of like the ground plane here so this will be the ground plane where your transformer and everything connects and uh, so that's kinda of how it works so I'll show you the inside here it's a little messy these things are always a little messy but you can see there's my my rectifier filter cap so the big old guys there but you can kinda of see my diodes there Kind of see the diodes down there. You can see one of the uh, regulators right there. The other regulator, I actually put them on each side so I can keep up with it in my own, my own head when I'm building these things. There's the other regulator. And these little small, uh, I can't see what I'm doing there. <laughs> these little small caps down here, those are actually the caps that are filtering uh, the output of the regulator. So they're one microfarad at, they're one microfarad at 50 volts. Still plenty of headroom. That's actually just a cap I had in stock I used. You could go, you know, you could go smaller in voltage, but one microfarad seems to filter really well. Um, and that's kind of how it looks. That's really it. But uh, that's the build. Now one other thing too I should point out is that these transformers actually are polarized for the most part. And the way you can tell if it's a positive, the the output, the hot, it's just like your your house wiring. You got a you got a, a common and then you got the hot or line and neutral and so you can see this black stripe that would be your your line voltage or your hot wire and the one without the stripe would be your your common so the common would be your ground the the hot would be the actual ones that goes into the diodes um, and that's basically how it works but I will say always test before you plug any of this stuff in you build always make sure it's right you can hook your pedal up you can go here with a voltmeter and you can see make sure it's a 5 volt uh, negative or positive as you slope the pedal always check that before you plug in because if you have something wrong and you know some like let's say a regulator is not wired right or something's shorted you can throw out 15 volts or whatever your voltage is off this this uh, regulated uh, line into your synthesizer and that can fry things so always double check things for you power you know, I can't stress that enough. But uh, anyways, guys, hope this gives you something to do over the this lockdown here. Maybe uh, some of you guys that like to build stuff, this would be a nice little uh, something to, to play with here. But uh, anyways, just want to take a minute here and show this off, and uh, hope, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Just let me know what you guys think. Take care.